In our last program, if you saw it, you remember one of the psychotherapists said that he couldn't help all his patients because they were too agitated or depressed for cooperation and they therefore needed some form of physical treatment. If you saw our first program, you may remember that Christopher Mayhew had an interview with a male nurse in a mental hospital about the changes in hospital life that had come about as a result of these sorts of treatment. This is what uh, Christopher Mayhew asked this nurse. Last time that a patient hit out against seriously against a member of your staff was it this year, for instance? Uh, no, no, I wouldn't say this year or last year. I start to go back a long way. And what do you attribute it to, Mr. Alf? Well, I should attribute it to several factors. Of course, um, drugs and various treatments like ECT, insulin, and uh, of course the open doors have taken away uh, the air of the prison, and they have given a good relationship between the staff and the patient. Thanks very much. Well, now, that's an important claim, isn't it? And uh, to tell us about these important new developments of physical treatment, we have here in the studio someone who's played a, as big a part as anyone in developing these methods in this country recently. And he's also written a standard textbook on the subject. So here he is, and the question I want to ask you first is, is this claim of this male nurse justified, do you think? Well, the point is, you see, that 20 or 30 years ago, it was no good even starting to open the doors of the mental hospitals because there were so many mentally tortured persons in them. You mean they were thought people who wanted to get out and escape uh, and perhaps hard damage themselves? Yes, I think the, their suffering was so great that, they, that was what they wanted to do so often, or perhaps even to harm other yes. people, you see. And what do you think is really the most important of these new methods of physical treatment? I think without doubt it's the treatment of depression by means of electric shock therapy. This treatment can save months of mental agony for patients by shortening attacks of depression from months or years down to a matter of a few weeks. And, how do and you see these treatments do help people who previously were not helped at all by psychotherapy methods alone. And how, how is it actually done? Well, we've got somebody here to show you. Good. Well... This patient has been good enough to come along tonight to go through the motions of having ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, by a modern method that we use now. And we start off by giving him an anesthetic. We're not actually going to give him treatment because he doesn't need it today. And in any case, we want him to talk to us in a minute about it. So this is the anesthetic going in now. And he counts Three, four, five, six. so that we can tell exactly when he's gone to sleep. And when this has happened, he has a second injection of a muscle-relaxing drug. This is the most important advance that's been made in this treatment since it was introduced. It almost completely relaxes all the muscles in his body, and it has, in fact, taken the convulsion out of convulsive treatment. Now he's been given some oxygen. He's quite unconscious, or would be, if we had put him to sleep. And now he has this rubber gadget put in his mouth to keep his teeth apart and stop him biting his tongue. And then I put these two pads on his temples like this. And the electricity comes from this box with which we can give a very carefully measured dose. With these two knobs, we adjust the dose, and then the current actually passes whilst I press this switch here. Now, I'm going to do that again, because I want you to watch his toes, because that is usually the only sign that we have that he's had an adequate dose. Uh, when I press this, all you see is a little twitch of his toes, like that, and that is as much as you will see, of the actual muscular movement of the treatment by this method. Uh, that is all the treatment consists of. In a couple of minutes or so, this acute stage is over, and in five or ten minutes, the patient will wake up, and in an hour or two, he'll be ready to go home. Now, I think I should emphasize that this is the method we would prefer to use for all electric shock treatment that's given now. Unfortunately, this is not possible, and a great many people still have this treatment by the old method, which did not involve the use of this muscle-relaxing drug. 
It is this muscle relaxing drug which has been the great advance in the treatment and I only want to reassure you that when it's given by the old method, it is still a very safe treatment. The re new advances have made it a much safer and pleasanter one for the patient. Well now, uh, how many treatments have you had? Six so far. And uh, they haven't worried you at all? No, not at all. Been all right? Yes, perfectly all right. Well, in spite of uh, that uh, statement, we have, you know, had a lot of letters from patients who've complained that they're worried and anxious about uh, ECT. Uh, what, well, how do you explain that? Well, you see, it does make some patients much more anxious, it's quite true. But not generally the patients who are most helped by treatment. For instance, this patient who is depressed, depressions are, are greatly helped. And they will often come up to a, a general hospital and have this treatment of an outpatient yes. simply because their illness is far more unpleasant than the treatment. Yes. Now, of course, people are worried by the fact that after one or two or perhaps four or five treatments, they do get transient upsets in memory, which do clear up after a few weeks. Yes. And, of course, there are those people who hate to go unconscious and others who hate waking up and being a bit bewildered as to where they are for the minute. But you know, you like an anaesthetic. No, and, and you do get an anaesthetic. But of course, yes. these people, so to speak, having, what, two anaesthetics a week for four or yes. five weeks. It would be rather nice to hear from, from this particular patient just exactly... Well, let's, uh, let's really ask him tell us what he does. Yes. yes. Well, I, uh, what I'd like, really like to ask, first of all, is it at all unpleasant, do you find, this treatment actually unpleasant? Or have you found it unpleasant? No, not at all. Not at all unpleasant. <laughs> Has it been painful at all? No, no pain at all. A headache, that's about all. And then has it upset you at all? No, no, it hasn't upset me at all. Could you tell us a little bit what you felt like before you started having the treatment? Well, a general lack of interest in most things and a certain depression. How, uh, long, how long have you been depressed before you came to treatment? Well, probably for a good six months. About six months? Right? Yes. yes. Yes, feeling down and everything? Yes, completely and are, and, down. Uh, are you better now? I think so, yes. Now tell me, didn't the first treatment make you at all anxious? I mean, it does something. I mean, tell, well, tell us honestly. <laughs> I wondered what I was going in for, what it was even. Yeah, I didn't yeah, know anything about yeah, it. Yeah. I felt so marvelously well after this first treatment yeah. that I had and no If qualms. you had a recurrence of the illness, would you, would you undergo the treatment again? Would it be worthwhile? Oh, yes, certainly worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, a very uh, reassuring account, yeah, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Uh, now, uh, in the first program in the series, we saw uh, in the outpatient department uh, a treatment by means of insulin, which is called a modified treatment of insulin, I think, to increase the patient's appetite, wasn't it? Now, that's one sort. What about the deep insulin treatment I've heard about? Well, that's a, a treatment called insulin coma treatment, really. Yeah. And it was discovered um, before the war in Vienna, and now practically every mental hospital in this country is using it. It's being used for various mental disorders, among which are schizophrenia, and you know, schizophrenia is one of the most serious of the mental disorders, and it does affect an enormous number of young people more than any other mental illness. So it is important to find an effective yeah. treatment for it amongst those. What's it? Uh, how is it actually done? Well, we've got a, a small film here.